Hello, my name is Mad Max, and I just fixed up this old display here, and I realized the vast majority of people out there probably do not know that you can fix pretty much every broken display with one twelfth cent part from the electronics store in 10 minutes of your time. So you find all these broken displays on, on eBay that you can repair for in like 15 minutes. So I just want to say really quickly, I'm not responsible if you blow yourself up. There we go. That being said though, it is extremely safe to do this if you know what you're doing. So first of all, after you unplug your display, you just let it sit there for a couple minutes so the condensers can discharge because there's still charge in there. Then it's actually safe to disassemble. So you disassemble it like this and then usually you have two boards and you have to figure out which one of the two is my power supply because the power supply is the thing that's usually broken. Well, it's really simple. Uh, number one, if you have a display cable attached to it, that's not power supply. Number two, if you have an actual power inlet going into the board, that's probably the power supply. And number three, you have these cables right here. These are um, high voltage cables that actually support the backlight. Because that's what this thing does, that's what the power supply does. Also, you know, if you have stuff like this, like insulation, that's probably the power supply. So get it out there, this, and um, just get rid of the insulation. And now let's have a look at this. Now I'm not going to explain to you how this works in detail because it doesn't really matter. But just what you need to know, there are two parts of this power supply. There's a high voltage side and a low voltage side. How do I know this is low voltage? Well, it has the uh, house power coming in, utility power coming in. That's like 200 whatever volts. Uh, that's low voltage, right? This has the connectors for the background lighting cables like these. And that's like 10,000, 15,000 volts. So this is the high voltage side. Um, pretty much what you should know is don't touch this side. If you ever plug this in like this, but you should never do, and if you do and kill yourself, it's also not my fault. But if you were to plug this in, uh, in this state, you don't want to touch it, but you especially don't want to touch it up here because that's a dangerous side. 15,000 volt means it will arc over uh, 1.5 centimeters. So like, this is already enough to get, uh, get shocked. Right. So usually the thing that's broken with these power supplies is a condenser right here. You have these condensers, they are always close to this yellow thing, they're always close to this uh, heat sink right here. And one of these cylinders usually is broken or multiple ones. How do you know if they are broken? All right, this is a broken condenser, right? And Let's see if I can get a little bit closer to the camera so can you see it. You see that it has this X on the top, but it's not actually focus, you fuck, right? It's not actually flat. It's a little bit difficult to see on camera, but it has kind of like a dome shape to it. It's not supposed to be the case, right? These things are supposed to be flat at the top, and they have this X, so that uh, that's actually like a emergency pressure release valve because if these break then the pressure inside rises and uh, they can even burst and then you have a hole at the top right here where the axis so if you have a hole or if you have a dome shaped uh, top then the condenser is broken and you have to switch it out that's the part that's broken it's a 12 cent thing you can buy in any electronic store that's the only thing that's broken it's the only thing standing between your whatever many hundreds of dollars of display and uh, it actually working is this 12 cent part. Right. But what do you do? How do you know, uh, you know, what kind of condenser you need to buy? So let me pick this back up to throw it away. Uh, if you look on the side of it, we see all the information we need. It says 470 and then like this weird UF 25V and then uh, somewhere else it also says 105 degrees Celsius. So if we if you actually write this down, so it's great. It's four hundred seventy micro farad. That thing is a micro, and it's twenty five volts, and it's one hundred five degrees Celsius. So here's the thing. When you buy one, 
this has to match exactly. And these other two things, right, they have to be at least that. So the first thing, that's a capacity, I'm not going to explain to you what a condenser actually does, but that's the thing a condenser does, right? It's like resistance of a resistor. This has to fit 470 microfarad. This is the voltage it's rated for. It has to be at least that. Now, if you look in here, um, we have like a bigger one and a smaller one. Like these are both 470 microfarad, but this one is 16 volts and this one is 25 volts. So uh, the bigger your voltage, the bigger they are. This one down here is also a condenser. That's 450 volts. That's why it's so big. So you can go higher with the voltage. You have to have the capacity exactly, but you can go higher with the voltage. You don't need to, but you can, right? But it will get bigger. Uh, lastly, temperature. Uh, that's like the maximum temperature they are rated for. You need to get at least that. However, you know, these companies put the cheapest parts in here they can. So they skip wherever they can. So they get stuff that's barely enough, right? So 105 degrees Celsius is barely enough. If you wanted to build something that lasted longer, you could go a step up and buy a 125 degrees Celsius uh, condenser, which would cost five times as much. So it's actually probably not worth it, but you could. So you go ahead and you just buy this condenser, right? With this capacity and at least like 25 volts and at least the temperature rating. And then you just remove the old condenser. Now I already switched it, right? This is a new one. It's a little bit smaller than the old one. Um, but let me tell you really quick how you switch this. First of all, you should take a picture of this because if you look closely, you can actually see that these things are not the same in all directions, right? They have this line, right? On one side they have this line, on the other side they do not have a line. Line, no line. You see the lines directly next to this leg, and if you actually get a new condenser and you look at it, you will also see that one leg is longer than the other, right? And the, sh the shorter leg is the one with the wired line. That is because these are directional, AKA it, it matters in which direction you put them in. So I get different uh, electrical properties when I put it in this way versus this way. So take a picture just so you know which direction the broken condenser is supposed to face. So th if this one is broken, just take a picture so you know that the white line is supposed to be right next to this other one. Next thing you do, really simple, you just find this on the back side, right? In my case, it's this right here. And then you just unsolder it and you solder in a new one. And it magically works again. My name is Will Max. I hope you save some money repairing this shit. But don't kill yourself. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.